Hi, boys and girls. Day three for our lesson in fairy tales. Um, if you have not had a chance to do Monday and Tuesday's lesson, you want to go ahead and do that. And that was the Frog Prince and the Little Mermaid. And now I'm going to read a story called Aladdin. Fairy tales are stories about magical lands, magical characters, okay? And these stories cannot happen in real life. Okay, let's listen. Before I read, sorry, you're going to be doing your star thinking, okay? Star thinking is when you're doing, uh, oh, sorry. I'm noticing, these are how you're going to start your sentences. I'm thinking, I'm feeling, I'm wondering what, because. Okay, so you have to share your thoughts. You can share any thought that you have while I am reading this story. Just jot, stop and jot a quick word to remind you what you're going to write about at the end. Okay, so again, you're starting with I'm noticing or I'm thinking or I'm feeling or I'm wondering because and then you need to write reasons to support your thoughts. You can't do this wrong, boys and girls. Star thinking is whatever you're thinking about the book and the story. Okay, here we go. Aladdin. If I do it this way. Okay. Okay. Aladdin was a poor boy who lived in a small house just outside the city. He made his living by gathering sticks and selling them for kindling at the market. Kindling is what you use to start a fire. One day he loaded a bundle of sticks on his back and walked to the city. Amir, his pet mongoose, rode on his shoulder, looking alertly around him. There were many wondrous sights to see in the city. In the midst of the great bustling crowd in the marketplace that day, a voice suddenly cried out, Make way, make way, the Sultan's daughter, Princess Lila, is coming through. The princess rode on a splendid white horse with a royal court around her. Aladdin pushed to the front of the crowd to get a glimpse of her. She was beautiful. Amir saw her too and began chattering so loudly that the princess turned and smiled at him and his master, Aladdin's heart filled with love for her. Standing in the crowd next to Aladdin was a clever magician named Rashid. Sorry, boys and girls. Rashid looked Aladdin up and down and remarked, young man, I could use your help. I will give you a gold coin if you do a simple task for me. Aladdin followed Rashid into the desert. They walked a long way until they came to a mountainous area. Here, said Rashid, pointing to a small opening in the mountainside, I cannot fit through the entrance to the cave, but I'm sure you can. Climb down into the cave and bring me the bronze lamp you find there and hurry. Aladdin slid into the cave. There he found precious jewels and coins heaped in piles and the lamp in a corner. He was about to hand it out to the magician when Amir chatted loudly and jerked his sleeve. Give it to me, shrieked the magician, but Aladdin refused. Rashid was so angry that he wedged a heavy rock in the mouth of the cave, blocking the hole, and left. Aladdin filled his pockets with as many precious stones as he could carry. Then, with the lamp on his lap, he sat down to ponder his plight. Amir ran round and round, looking for a way out, but there was none. Aladdin began to weep. His tears rolled down onto the lamp, and Aladdin rubbed them away. As he did... A huge genie in a cloud of green smoke appeared. What is your desire, master? Your wish is my command, the genie thundered. Aladdin cried, get us out of here. No sooner had Aladdin spoken than he and Amir were outside the cave. He still clutched the bronze lamp. He felt in his pockets to make sure that he still had the precious jewels. Back home again, Aladdin felt hungry. He rubbed the lamp and asked the genie to bring him food. 
Immediately, his table was spread with a feast fit for the sultan. Sorry. Fit for a sultan, all served on fine plates and crockery. The food was delicious, but Aladdin could not eat much. His heart was aching for the sultan's beautiful daughter, Lila. He asked the genie to dress him in royal clothes and give him a noble horse. Then Aladdin rode to the sultan's palace. In a leather pouch, he carried a mirror and the precious stones from the desert cave. The Sultan's palace was huge and richly appointed. Aladdin trembled at the sight, but his love for the princess calmed him. Sire, he said, kneeling before the Sultan, I bring you these humble jewels and ask your daughter's hand in marriage. The Sultan had never before seen such rich jewels. He thought Aladdin must be the son of a powerful Sultan from another country. So he agree agreed to give him Princess Lila as his wife. Lila was pleased that Aladdin had asked for her hand, for she thought him as a kind and handsome young man. Aladdin and the princess were married, and the genie built them a palace even more beautiful than the sultan's. Aladdin and the princess were happy there until the day Rashid learned about what had happened. The magician knew that the young husband had his magic lamp. He hurried to a shop and bought a dozen shiny bronze lamps. One day when Aladdin was not home, Rashid dressed as a peddler and brought the lamps to the palace. New lamps for old! He called new lamps for old. The princess, remembering Aladdin's battered old lamp, thought to surprise him with a new one. The sly magician traded one of his shiny lamps for the magic one. Soon he summoned the genie. Build me a splendid palace in another city, Rashid commanded, and bring me Princess Lila. It was done at once. Aladdin returned to his palace to find that his beloved wife was gone. Poor Aladdin, his heart was broken, but a mirror slipped away and began to look for her. For many days, the little mongoose searched. At last, hungry and exhausted, he came to Rashid's palace. There he found Princess Lila sobbing for Aladdin. When a mirror crept onto her lap, she kissed him and tied her silk hair ribbon around his neck. Okay. The brave little mongoose hurried back to his master. When Aladdin saw the scarf, he followed a mirror to Rashid's palace. There, while the wicked magician was sleeping, they found the magic lamp, and in a wink, the genie spirited Aladdin, Princess Lila, and Amir back to their home. When the sultan heard the story, he was very angry. He banished the evil Rashid, who was never heard from again. Aladdin and the beautiful Lila lived happily ever after that. They raised a large family and the favorite playmates of their many children and grandchildren were several generations of mongoose, the offspring of their faithful friend, Amir. Okay, so again, you can answer one of these questions. I wanted to jot down about three things while I was reading. It reminded me of something that I noticed something that I wanted to write about. I was thinking something that I wanted to write about. Um, wasn't really feeling that moment. Um, but if you were, you can write something you were feeling. And I'm wondering because. Okay. Okay. So off you go and you can follow up your writing in your composition book.